Do you get the sense as you travel the country, talk to people, speak, um, that we're on the, the it, it feels like we're on the cusp of chaos? I think we're on the cusp of something. I'd like to think of it as a revolution in a positive sense of that word. I think that, you know, I try to be an optimist at but times. You, do you feel like this is... Oh, there's something going on. I yeah. mean, I think we're like in a 1775, spring of 1776 moment in this country, actually. I think that people are hungry. Now, the form I want to see it play out in is reviving those shared ideals that unite us, that set the nation into motion in 1776, that I think are innate to our nature as human beings, as Americans. I think that there's a hunger for a revival of those ideals. That's where we are, but... There's a lot of ways that energy could go. The way I would like to play my small role in helping channel that energy, it's not all going to be done by the U.S. president, but there's a role to play, is to channel that energy towards a positive revival of that which unites us across our diverse attributes or divides. But if it doesn't go that way, there's a there's a dam that's going to break and, and the river's going to go somewhere. Hello, family. Welcome back to another episode of Journey to Harmony. I'm your host, Richard Harmon. Today, I want to talk to you guys about a interview that Vivek Ramaswamy had with Tucker Carlson uh, back. It was, I think it was a few months ago, maybe about four or five months ago. But his, his some of the topics that they discussed were very interesting and it relates to 2024. And I just wanted to go over a bit of this. Right. So many of us have been following the economic situation here in America. Uh, we've seen how the, um, you know, the cost of living has gone through the roof. We've seen how inflation has risen drastically. We've seen how um, just the everyday cost of normal life has become out of of contact from many normal everyday Americans. Additionally, we've seen the border crisis has been going on, raging now for months, and 2024 looks like it's going to be even wilder. Um, in the opening log here, opening video, you see uh, Vivek talk about how you know you feel something is coming, something is strange is happening. Uh, we see with Donald Trump first and foremost that the whole Fannie Wilson. Philip Willis issue uh, possibly could be unraveling a bit, but still, you know, you feel like there's something that still the Democrats have in place that they're thinking about doing. I'm going to play a video here. We'll watch a little bit more of this video. The first time joining, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. And here we go. I hope it leads towards a national revival rather than, you know, other places where this could go. How concerned are you about an economic, like a real economic reset in the next year? Quite concerned. I think that 2024 is going to be a year where I, it's not going to take a lot of guts for me to make this prediction because I'll tell you why it's easy to make. We're on the cusp of a major economic downturn next year. We live under conditions of a deeply inverted yield curve. I mean, these are topics that may put people to sleep. And so we don't have to Can you explain get into it. Yeah. I mean, it's basically you would expect in the long run, right? Long run interest rates on long run bonds are higher compared to interest rates on short-run bonds because there would be higher risk of being repaid back. That's how things are supposed right. to work. There are a wide range of factors that can occasionally cause that to tilt in the other direction. We're in one of those conditions right now where the interest rates on short-term bonds are significantly higher than they are on long-run bonds. All right, so really quickly here, just wanted to go over this particular uh, topic right here, right? So when you say long-term bonds, it's basically saying that, hey, if I'm borrowing money to someone, um, you would expect that if I'm borrowing money to you for a short period of time, that it's going to come at a low interest rate. And if I'm borrowing money at a longer period of time, it's going to come at a higher interest rate because the rate of um, possibly something going wrong is increased as that goes along. So, um, you know, the, the whole bond market thing, it's it can be confusing at times, but it's basically the whole overall idea with that. We'll go ahead and continue. And every time that's happened in the last 40 years that has predicted a recession, that followed in the year or so that came later. And there's lots of complicated reasons for why, and economists can debate it. But what's not debatable is that that's exactly what happens. That's where we are now, which is why we're, I think, in the calm before the storm. Biden will put up low unemployment numbers. Well, that misses the point that we have a deeper structural deficiency where our real problem is there are twice as many jobs open as there are people looking for work. Right. That's the actual deeper structural failure as it relates to the but labor market. People have stopped looking for work. People have stopped looking for work. Absolutely. I mean, people are being paid more or have been habituated more to staying at home than to go to work. People also don't have the skill sets required to actually show up to work because they have four year college degrees that were subsidized by the U.S. Department of Education without actually having the skill sets that many employers badly need in order to grow their business, whether it's a big business or a small one. You know, the inflation numbers, they'll point to saying, hey, the rate of inflation is coming down. 
inflation's cumulative. Things are still 16, 20% more expensive than they were in 2020, and wages have not gone up in the same way over the same period. And so there are deep structural issues with our economy. I mean, the national debt, interest payments are going to be the biggest portion and line item of the federal budget very soon. But I think that that short-term numbers that we look at right now belie the reality that we're going to have a reckoning. I think that reckoning is likely going to, the timing of these things is hard to predict, but I think that likely reckoning 2024 could be a pretty good prediction for what's coming. But that's not just an economic story. I mean, people have psychologically, I think, a very hard time moving backward. Yes. Right. It's it's one thing to be poor. It's another thing to be poor having been rich. Yes. It's very hard yes. for people to metabolize that. Mm-hmm. And so if that happens to hundreds of millions of people at the same time, people get radical. Especially against the backdrop of already having deep distrust. Right. In my opinion, appropriately deep distrust in our existing institutions, including the government in this country. And so I think there are two ways this could break. Right. Sometimes you go through hardship. And you're strengthened by that hardship. I'm just thinking about it as an individual in my life. Like I've gone through a hardship in my life. My, my father's been through hardship. In each of those cases, that led us to become stronger for having gone through that and did things that we otherwise would have never done, created things in the world that otherwise would have never existed. And that's the positive version of this. And it's the version I want to see for our country. But there's a very different way this could break too, is I think that if we don't channel that frustration in a direction that creates something anew, right? A sort of reincarnation of our American experiment, which is what's going to be required. Then I think this ends the way that many other revolutions do. All right, perfect. So we heard it there from Vivek. And I think many people, if you're, we're being honest, I think many of us feel the same way. Um, America's in for very interesting in the next few months. I think many of the, the tricks and the games that have been played um, you know, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but I think it was Q3 of, of this past year. They said that the GDP was, was supposed to be like 5%, which is one of the highest GDPs of like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, like 2021 during that time period, you know, and obviously that is not the case right now. Many people are having to work two and three jobs. Um, people are going through some difficult, hard times right now. And there many people are not paying, are able to pay their bills. You have your um issues with with housing and the cost of living and the homeless crisis that is growing up there's a lot of problems that are going on right now in america and in the midst of it the person who was elected to be the the commander in chief the person who was supposed to protect the people of the united states um is turning a blind eye to the border right now um while there's already issues you're adding millions of people every year to the workforce and in a space that already doesn't pay um, that's not a good thing for many people that's going to be cause a huge problem for many of us who are looking to better our lives and not just that but in terms of the cost of housing it will continue to rise because there are more people crossing the border than we're able to build housing for so even if we're able to build two million or three million units we, we we're, we're growing so far behind in terms of this particular process and there's so much that is happening right now um, places like california are facing deficits as people are leaving in droves and as more and more people come california just um, elected to give 750,000 people the option for free health care and that health care as you're you're looking at it it's going to have a serious implication to those who are working on the front lines they're going to be overrun because the number of people that are showing up to those events are going to be astronomical. Um, you have people in working in different sectors in terms of the the uh, social workers. You have so many people who are going to be coming through that the social uh, social network and social platforms are going to be largely overrun as well. We're hearing about this in parts of Texas. Uh, New York City is complaining about it in their cities as they are saying again and again that they're full. You have the governor of Illinois recently come out and say that he is begging Greg Abbott to stop sending people and he continues to send them. I don't blame him at all. If you're getting overrun at the border and those in these other cities have been the ones to say that they want uh, these illegal migrants to come in, you have a right to send them to where it is that, that they have said that they want to go. And as they're going there, they, they can figure it out, you know, so each each state is going to feel the brunt of this, whether directly from the illegal immigrants or it's coming from those who are leaving from those places and going to a different state. So if you're living in Ohio, Ohio has been seeing a great influx of people as Amazon and a few other places have built warehouses there. And if you're living in Oklahoma, if you're living in in um, 
Alabama, if you're living in Arkansas, those places are beginning to boom very quietly. Um, those are like 2014 Texas, 2014 Florida. They're, they're, they're beginning. A lot of the people from Florida are moving to Alabama. A lot of people from Texas are moving to Arkansas. And as a result, um, we are, 2024 is going to be an interesting year. And we already see this thing happening right now. Um, Vivek and, and Donald Trump has teamed up together and they're getting ready on a world beaters tour. Um, what exactly happens with Joe Biden as every day we watch him, we see that he is um, not in his, you know, not in his strongest place in terms of his faculties. So who exactly is going to be replacing him is possibly Gavin Newsom. Um, will Michelle Obama decide to throw her ring into the hat? We don't know exactly what the plan is for the Democratic Party. But again, the, the Trump train is beginning to roar. And I don't think that there's any person that's currently in place, Joe Biden or uh, Kamala Harris are capable of stopping him overall. And as more of, of these pe uh, people cross the border, the average citizen is going to be upset by it. As you know, the, the White House right now, the White House is on, on the verge of suing Texas for, for blocking and protecting its border.